In this video, I'm going to unbox and review the D&D Essentials Kit, the new starter set for Dungeons & Dragons 5e. Hi, Bob here and welcome to Bob World Builder, the D&D channel where we improve our games together. Subscribe for new videos every Wednesday. And if you're just looking for a quick comparison of the D&D Essentials Kit to the original D&D 5e starter set, check out the video in the cards and the description. Okay, here it is at last, the D&D Essentials Kit. There's an affiliate link in the description if you want to grab this kit and help me make better videos all in one go. But let's dive right in. I did open this already, so some of these things are pre-assembled. For example, our card box. So this box is really easy to put together. It just kind of folded into place, and I've already put most of the cards in here. But if you see this sheet right here, this is how most of the cards come or how all of the cards come, in sheets of nine. And specifically, these cards are initiative. So you can pass these out to remind people you know, what order they have in combat. That's all this one really shows, and I kept it together just so you could see that. Inside, and the whole deck fits pretty nicely, but what you can see right off the bat, and especially from that sheet, is that they're all perforated together. So these are not exactly as high quality as these spell cards and magic item and monster cards that have already been released by wizards. I feel like these edges are probably going to fray over time, but because they give you that box to move them around in, they're going to stay in better condition than if you were carrying them around in a rubber band or something. We have combat cards, three of these just explaining what to do in combat for new players. Determine surprise, establish positions, etc. We have nine NPC sidekick cards. So I expected these to have a character sheet, but instead, each of them, you know, a simplified character sheet for the sidekick details, but instead, it's really just their personality and the description of kind of what they look like their name and their, yeah, race and sub race. Quest cards. So there are nine of these as well for the three kind of starter and six follow up quests. We have our condition cards in here with the same art that you'll recognize from the player's handbook and the dungeon master's screen. And this one was kind of interesting, along with these magic item cards, but a magic charm. So you become charged with the power of the storm. This is specific to this adventure. And again, like players will have this charm on them for only a certain amount of time, and then it can be passed back to the dungeon master. Most of the cards are these magic items. I think all the rest of these are magic items. Yeah, 36 total magic items, but most of them are things that I recognize at a quick glance. A lot of plus one weapons. Yeah, but great stuff. Easy to pass between players, between the dungeon master and players. Really, the cards were a smart addition by wizards, for sure. These are our cherry lozenge red dice, so they're kind of a clear you know, a translucent bright red color. I couldn't see any bubbles in here, but you've noticed I haven't opened the package yet because I want to roll these babies on camera for the first time. So save that for the end of the video. And here is our adventure module, The Dragon of Icefire Peak by Chris Perkins. This adventure is 47 pages for levels one through six players and is designed for new and experienced DMs and players. If you don't have a full party, that's no problem because this module is also designed for a duet style game with one DM and one player. And this style is made possible by the inclusion of those sidekicks. I'll tell you a little bit more about the sidekicks when we get to the rule book, but like the original and now classic D&D 5e starter adventure Lost Mine of Fandelver, this module takes place in Fandolin. And while they share a setting, the events can occur before, after, or even at the same time as that adventure, because Dragon of Icefire Peak contains 14 never-before-seen Fandolin locations, and each one is connected to the three starter quests and six follow-up quests. And again, all of those quests have a summary in the deck, which is pretty interesting. Right off the bat, something I noticed about this and was really impressed by is the quality of the book. So even the individual pages are kind of this glossy, just high quality paper that I wasn't expecting from the intro module. Some interesting art right here of an undead horse. We see that it starts with running the adventure, you know, an overview kind of of D&D and of the adventure itself, the Forgotten Realms, character creation. Again, that's a huge element of this is just emphasis on character creation. And then just all 14 of our locations. Here's our running the adventure section with some thunderous boar right there. Hopefully that's not too much of a spoiler for any of you guys. Here's the uh, DM's map with some of the secret locations. 
This is our regional map of the Sword Coast containing Phandalin. Okay, so skip ahead about 30 seconds if you don't want to see any of this adventure summary. Here we go. Driven from the lands farther north by more powerful dragons, a young white dragon named Syravane has descended upon the Sword Mountains, claiming the now snow-capped range as its domain. Typical of its kind, Syravane is dim-witted and cruel. The dragon patrols the skies around Icefire Peak, surveying its territory while hunting for food and easy treasure. All right, skipping ahead a little bit. The crumbling fortress on the northwest spur of the Icefire Peak serves as the dragon's lair. Syravane seized the icy fortress from a tribe of savage orcs, killing the orc war chief and forcing the tribe's survivors to flee into the foothills and forests. Enraged by the death of their war chief, the orcs have called upon ancient allies, evil shape-changing half-orc spellcasters, who bless and advise them. These half-orcs worship Talos, an evil god of storms, and dwell in the dark depths of Neverwinter Wood. Okay, so... You know, kind of typical adventure here with our orcs and our dragon, but that's what we want in a starter adventure and for new players. I'm going to skip through here a little bit just to give you a look so it shows kind of how to use the cards. There are a lot of good tips in here for new DMs and great maps. Yeah, here's a couple of our enemies if you want to get a look at that. Giant spiders, harpies. Oh, Gorthok the Thunderbore. There he is. Here's one of our shapeshifters and our young white dragon. So again, this is 47 pages. We have our map key here as well and some awesome art. I really loved the art on the Dungeon Master screen and right here it is by, I don't know how to pronounce his name, G-R-Z-E-G-O-R-Z -E -G Rutkowski. Hopefully one of you guys can help me out in the comments with that. Okay. Really impressive adventure. I'll probably do a separate video just on this and some tips for running it, and maybe even some gameplay, so let me know if you guys want to see that. Here's our fold-out map, complementary to our Dungeon Masters map within. Pretty big regional map. I'm not going to be able to show the whole thing on camera here. And on the other side, we have our map of Phandalin, just in a bigger setting so the players can see this spread out on the table, and it's easy for the DM to kind of show them where they are. Now, the rule book. Also, really good quality book, you know, these glossy pages. Anyway, this comes in at 64 total pages. It has a pretty big emphasis on character creation, which we knew to expect from the announcement during D&D Live. But we can see here that chapter one is all about creating a character. So almost half this book is just dedicated to character creation. Then we have playing the game, which takes up about another third of the book, and equipment, spells, Spells are pretty much the rest of it. But at the end over here, we have our sidekick rules. Probably something else to make a separate video about. But these are more or less the same rules that we saw in Unearthed Arcana. What's nice is they come with these level 1 sidekick stat blocks. So one for our spellcaster, one for a warrior, and one for our expert. Again, these are kind of mimicking the iconic classes of fighter, cleric, wizard, and our rogue. And one thing I'll mention, because I did skip that part, this adventure also includes the bard in here with our iconic classes because it's one that has really become popular with 5e. So it's pretty neat of them to include it in here. I'll note that these do only go from 2nd to 6th level because that's all this adventure is meant for, so you'll have to look at Unearthed Arcana to see the rest, but this might be available on D&D Beyond. More on that in a second. Overall, this is pretty great. It's twice the size of the rulebook that came in the initial starter kit, mostly because of that character creation info. Here's our DM screen. But we have a really cool adventuring party. Look at that little cat familiar at the bottom with a mouse. Love it. Some orc raiders over there. And bada bing, our white dragon. Who's supposed to be a young white dragon, but looks really muscled in that picture. And the interior of the screen is, I believe, identical to the reincarnated Dungeon Master screen that came out a little while ago. But one thing you might have already noticed is that this screen is a very thin, well, it's basically a thick paper or a very thin cardboard, kind of something in between, unlike the thick cardboard reincarnated screen that we got earlier in 5th edition. Still a great inclusion, though. I think this is going to make the game a lot easier for those new DMs who are kind of behind the screen, making their rolls, and having a quick summary of everything right in front of them. Next, we have character sheets. Now, a big difference between this and the original starter set is this includes absolutely zero pre-generated characters. These are just blank character sheets of kind of a nice thick paper, so they'll last a little while. And these are good just for players who already are into D&D because you can keep this to kind of make copies if you like. 
And right here we have all of our lovely coupons, essentially, from Wizards of the Coast, you know, advertising our core books and other materials. But of also, what I thought was really great, 50% off the Player's Handbook on D&D Beyond. So I'm not sure how the D&D Beyond price compares to buying it off Amazon, if they're the same or not. But the idea is this is a great stepping stone for new players moving from this starter kit right into the only core book that really matters, if we're honest. And access to additional adventure content to continue the Dragon of Ice Fire Peak story into higher levels of play. That is very cool. So you can actually play this adventure beyond 6th level. You can get the digital version of the adventure. And again, there's our player's handbook. So a pretty nice thing for them to include in here. Okay, so I think we're ready. I'll get this out of the way. The unbagging. Okay, so here are our dice. These very clear, very vibrant red dice. I don't see any bubbles in here, which is really impressive, honestly. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but as you can see, we get four D6s, perfect for character creation, and two D20s. So here we go, guys. Time to roll these puppies. And last thing I'll say again is remember, if you want to order the Essentials Kit, you can do so via the affiliate link down in the description to help the channel. 8 and 15. <laughs> All right, not bad, not bad, not a 20, but not a 1. I think we're in luck, guys. Great kit. Check out the videos on your screen for more information about the D&D Essentials Kit. Thank you for watching, and keep building.